Welcome to Everything Life and Real Estate. Let's get started with our hosts, Linda McKissick and Dana Gentry. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Everything Life and Real Estate. I'm Linda McKissick. And I'm Dana Gentry. Hey, Dana, before we get started, what's new with you? Oh my goodness, I am actually in Charleston, South Carolina this week and working from here and have, gosh, had a really crazy week, but stepping out for our amazing guest today so that I'm actually teaching business planning clinic today here. <laughs> so yeah, what about you? Uh, you know what, just kind of the same old stuff. Just uh, you and I just finished a great fishing trip in West Virginia. So just getting back to the Zoom technology that we do. So I'm super excited. Why don't you introduce our guest for us today? Yes, we are very excited. So we are continuing our health and wealth series we've been doing. And today we're going to talk health with the amazing Amanda Nivert. Welcome, Amanda. Thank you, ladies, so much. I'm excited to be here. Yeah, we were so excited to have you. We've had we talk a lot intermittent fasting. We talk about a lot um, of the, the benefits of intermittent fasting. And, and we both have been big intermittent fasting fans. And we've been doing this series around health and wealth. And so I told Linda, I said, okay, we've just got to have Amanda on so she can share all of the goodness that she has to offer. Around love it. Love health. it. <laughs> so do you want to start with giving everybody maybe just a little background, a little bit about yourself? Yes. Well, my name is Amanda Nybert. I'm a registered dietitian with a passion for health and wellness. And I actually worked in the clinical setting for um, about 16 years. And three years ago, kind of stepped out of my comfort zone, jumped into this virtual space and started working with clients virtually. Um, my signature program, Lean, Living Energized and Nourished, is um, super popular and we implement intermittent fasting. Love it. Yeah. One thing I actually, I don't know, it might be kind of cool to start with. You've grown an amazing business pretty much all virtually. Is that right? I have. Yes. From, from the ground up. <laughs> yeah. And would you say social media has been the biggest, I mean, I, I would think that, but how, what's been the, what's, how have you done that? I mean, you've, you've. Grown My number one marketing strategy when I started this was to leverage social media. Um, so when I, um, launched my practice in 2017, I didn't have, uh, I didn't have an office. I didn't have a website. I didn't have a phone number. I had nothing. All I did was start to put content out on social media and grow my following and create that kind of like, no trust factor. And, you know, over time with kind of like a nurture campaign, you got to kind of nurture your followers. Um, you know, people started working with me and it's been amazing. Started with 400 followers and, um, built it up from there. Yeah. You're like in the 50 thousands now, right? I think are very <laughs> <laughs> close, close. So, I mean, I have some questions because being a registered dietitian, um, you, you somewhere kind of got off the beaten path probably of what old traditionally you had. Been oh, yes. To teach people, tell us how that happened because you know a lot of people when they hear fasting or any that anything like any word like that in anything they think oh my god you're starving yourself this starving is, yourself you know yeah. science support this so tell us you about you know it's really funny because I always say as a registered dietitian in order to get your diploma you must put your hand on your diploma and say breakfast is the most important meal of the day you know that's basically you know. <laughs> what we live and die by in, in the field of dietetics. And so for me to really get on board with time restricted eating, um, also considered intermittent fasting, it took a lot, um, a lot of research, a lot of hearing about it kind of over and over, and then actually just experimenting it with myself to see all the incredible benefits that intermittent fasting provides. Here's the deal. Back in 1977, when the, new, when the government came out with the food guide pyramid, the first nutritional guidelines, um, prior to the existence of that, we ate three meals a day, three square meals a day. And typically breakfast was at eight, lunch was at noon, and dinner was at 5.30 and we were done. There was no snacking between meals. You know, I, and I remember, I mean, I'm 43. I remember coming home from high school asking for a snack and my mom would say, no, you're going to ruin your dinner. Mm -hmm. You know, nowadays it's like, if we don't feed our kids every two hours, they're going to die. Mm -hmm. And, and then we wonder why 
they don't sit down and eat chicken and broccoli at dinner? Well, because they just had a bowl of goldfish an hour ago. Mm -hmm. So this notion of six small meals a day really came out of an assumption about metabolism. So the assumption was, is that, well, it's not an assumption. We know that eating actually increases your metabolism. It creates a little metabolic spike when we're digesting food. So the theory was, is that if eating increases your metabolism, instead of increasing your metabolism three times a day, why not do it six times a day? And that's where this whole notion of six small meals came about. Well, what we didn't know in 1977 when we created this guideline is we didn't understand the endocrine system and we didn't really understand how fat was stored. We thought it was about calories in versus calories out. And we now know that it's really about insulin balance. Insulin is the number one fat storing hormone in the body. And so if we learn to reduce our insulin intake, we don't store fat. But what happened is, is prior to the six small meals a day, we had an insulin spike three times a day, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And we had time for that um, insulin to recover between each meal. Then we went to six small meals a day and we're eating from six in the morning till 10 at night and our insulin levels are high all day long. And that created a huge shift mm -hmm. in um, the weight of the population. I mean, obesity has skyrocketed since the nutritional guideline came out, since we implemented six small meals a day, since we implemented low calorie, low fat. So, um, you know, that's kind of where it all started. Mm, so true. You know, and yeah, I, I, I hear you say that. And I think, you know, for many, many years, we all believed, and he said, you know, we, we were eating three meals, but for some people, and Dana's heard me say this before, because I work with a genetics doctor, some people actually have an appetite gene that doesn't have something on it that tells them they're full. So the minute they start eating, it's not three meals, it's all day from the time they all get day. up, myself included. So that's amazing. I love that. So, you know, it's a, interesting you say that because I, when I worked in the clinical setting and I was preaching, three meals, like you don't skip breakfast, you know, skipping breakfast is the worst thing you can ever do. I would have clients say to me, you know, but Amanda, if I eat breakfast, I'm starving all day long. I can't stop eating. But if I don't eat breakfast, I'm not hungry till one or two, you know, and I was always like, oh, well, that's your metabolism revving up, you know, that's good for you. But it's kind of like what you're saying. No, it's not good for everybody. Yeah, I'm okay. definitely that way. If I eat breakfast, done yep. I'm, I'm eating and starving the rest of the day if not i always i can make it till you know one two or three i mean it just depends on what i'm doing but very yeah hard. awesome so tell us a little bit about um i mean you've done a phenomenal job of like i said my daughter-in-law found your book I, I ordered it on kindle read it she was super excited so i supported her and doing you know the meals and all those kind of things but where when you were building this did you envision first of all that it would be this big uh, that you would attract this many people to be interested in, in your program. And did you have mentors or coaches that really made a difference in, you know, cause going from the clinical practice where people come to you, it's totally different to now go out into the world and build a tribe of people who love what your message is and need what your message. I always say finding intermittent fasting changed my life. I wish I'd have found it 30 years ago. It for, for some people you'll change their life forever with this stuff. So how did that, how did you go about, did you find mentors and coaches that said, Hey, this is how you find the, the tribe that will be ready for your message. Tell us a little bit about how you built that. You know, I really just started putting out content. I mean, I think the space of nutritional information, it's just so confusing. Like people don't understand what's right and what's wrong because we're being told two different things. You know, you're told to eat six small meals a day and then someone's telling you eat one meal a day. You know, someone's telling you to eat low fat, low calorie, and someone's telling you to eat high fat, you know, high calorie. So um, I try to, I try to market to the, to people that are like me. Okay. You know, the average woman who has a very fulfilled, you know, life that includes socialization, they have kids, they're busy, they're on the go and all or nothing is not, you know, doing everything perfectly. is just not in, in, in the cards. Mm -hmm. So it's a lot of progress, not perfection. And I found just putting out simple nutritional tips and strategies was how I kind of grew, um, you know, my base and have been able to help so many people, both in my lean program and, you know, outside of the program. Yeah. You know, I have so many people that will reach out to me and say, Hey, I've never done your program, but 
I started fasting or I started tracking my macros or I eliminated dairy and, and I feel so much better for it. I remember correctly with Anna's program. Sorry, Dana. Uh, on your fasting, seemed like the fasting only came in like one day or am I, am I confused about, cause I kind of just jumped in and did it with her uh, when she was at my house or I was at her house, but tell us a little bit how the fasting, I know you have great uh, food, charts that they go pick up the food and they can order, you know, what they need and all that stuff. But what is the, what, what how does the fasting work in your program? What, and, what is and Amanda, I would, you said macros and it just made me think because I think that confuses a lot of people. And so I would love for you to touch on that too. Cause I remember when I very first, it's probably been almost three years ago. I think probably when I did the very first round with you with lean, I still have what Linda's on the book, my downloadable Pete. Like I still use that all the time, all the time. And yeah. it took me a minute to get the macros and the fat. I mean, it really does kind of take you a minute to get it. It is. So macros is really short for macronutrients, carbohydrates, proteins, fats. Do you ladies know the fourth macronutrient? It's our favorite. Uh, alcohol? No, I'm just kidding. Alcohol, it is alcohol. <laughs> yes, it is. it is alcohol, yeah. <laughs> Um, you know, and so a lot of people are really tied up on that caloric, that caloric balance in and out where we recognize now that with that kind of insulin response, it's more about balancing your macronutrients. And that's what we really focus on with regards to the fasting. We actually implement on a daily basis, the 16, eight fast, you know, you guys know there's a lot of different ways to implement intermittent fasting. Um, Everyone that's listening to this podcast should be fasting for at least 12 hours. I always say from our one-year-olds to our 110-year-olds, a 12-hour fast is really the bare minimum. When we look at our history, we were by default fasting for at least 12 to 14 hours most days based on our meal patterns. Um, so 12 hours is the minimum. I find 16 hours is really the sweet spot for weight loss because it takes about 12 to 14 hours for your body to digest your last meal. So it's really those last two hours where the body's forced to go look for energy in, in stored places, i.e. stored fat. So I encourage my clients to do um, at, at least a 16 hour fast a day and our eating window is eight hours. So most people will break their fast at about 11 and wrap it up at seven or break their fast at about noon and wrap it up at eight or break their fast at one and wrap it up at nine. Um, so it makes it very doable. Now, once a week, we do what I consider an extended fast, which is where we fast for 24 to 36 hours. Um, and that's pretty much every Monday. So the benefit, you know, really the reason why fasting has gotten such um, attention over the last couple of years is because in 2016, the Nobel Peace Prize was won for the discovery of a process called autophagy. And what we learned from that discovery is that there is actually a ton of benefit of not eating. And prior to that discovery, we thought that there was only a downside to not eating and that, that it reduced your metabolism. So once the discovery of autophagy came about and all the medical applications that it provides and the overall health and wellness that it gives us, um, people just started studying it like gangbusters. Fast forward a couple of years and now we have all this science that shows breakfast is no longer the most important meal of the day and skipping breakfast may be better for your health than actually eating it. So, um, so yeah, those are the different types of fasting we use in lean. Awesome. Linda, Linda's gotten into doing what, 36 hours now? Yeah. I mean, you know, I'm one of those people that I've probably for the last 30 something years, I've probably tried everything out there, right? And just so disciplined in so many areas of business and life and everything else and just constantly feeling like, why in the world can I not get this? What is wrong with me that I can't get this, right? It was the one messy drawer that I couldn't fix and I'm just so determined to, so when I started doing intermittent fasting and you'd hear on the podcast about people losing massive weight. Well, to be honest with you, in two and a half years, I only lost like eight or nine pounds. And, but I, it controlled my appetite. It, it put me in control of food instead of food in control of me. So there was a right. non-scale victories that I knew it would be a lifestyle, right? But later when I was mentally ready, cause I'm one of those people that if I feel like I can't have it, gosh, I want it even worse. Probably like Absolutely. most. Absolutely. So when I 
realized that I had to be the experiment of one. I, I can't put myself in a box and do what everybody else does. I have to figure out genetically, because this is kind of what I learned from my genetics doctor, we're all different, right? And so genetically, he helped me understand about the appetite gene, which I had no idea. Um, and he said, you're going to fight willpower for the rest of your life. You can't do that. you got to have some system, like your system is a system that works for some people, right? Or most Correct. people. So I realized that I was going to have to, if I wanted to lose more weight, I needed to see what, what needed to happen for me. And so I hired um, Jason Fung's group out of uh, Canada and, and started the intermittent fasting coaching program with them. And wow. the first thing she said is based on your age, um, some women your age have a little harder time losing. So let's try some alternate day. I thought, oh my God, this is horrible. How am I going to do this? But I've actually gotten in a pretty good rhythm. I've done a few, uh, quite a, I do pretty much every week. I'll do a couple of uh, 36 to 39 hours. Uh, and there's a little moments you feel like you can't make it, but overall I feel fantastic. I'm losing weight faster. And so I think you have to, you have to kind of see who you are and what works for you. Right. Yeah, absolutely. You've worked with the best. You know, Dr. Fung is the godfather of fasting. Um, his book, The Complete Guide to Fasting, is one of my favorite resources to learn more about intermittent fasting. Um, but yeah, you're right. You know, the other benefit, you know, um, when we talk about autophagy and, and even weight loss, you know, that the hours between 24 and 36, you know, the benefit of autophagy increases almost 300%. Wow. So just extending that fast, you know, beyond that 24 hours gives you such a, such a, a health boost, um, you know, overall and, and yes, alternate day fasting, you know, a lot of people do one meal a day fasting, you know, the, the 16, eight, I think is very um, approachable for most people getting started. I think if you go in and say you can't eat for 36 hours, three days a week, people are out, you know, <laughs> they're not going to be able to do it. So, um, you know, and that's why, I, I mean, I, and there are people that think 16 hours seems overwhelming. I, you know, if I don't eat breakfast, I'm going to melt. And I always say, and you probably learned this big time, Linda, it, it's an electrolyte issue. You know, it's not your blood sugar dropping. It's your sodium, potassium, and magnesium out of balance. And, is the reason why you feel not great in that fasted state. So little tricks like that can really impact the way you tolerate a, a, a fast. Awesome. We used to joke, remember Linda, and say you'd wake up and felt like you had the flu in the middle of the night sometimes. Um, well, I still don't sleep very well most nights. Uh, and I'm trying different things, magnesium and different stuff like that. And I do the salt and stuff like that. But yeah, you, yeah, everybody's different on how they react to electrolytes. You know, I can go almost 30 hours and still only be like 0.1 or 0.3 on a keto mojo meter, you know, and think, okay, what's the heck here? You know? Yeah. So you just, you, we are unique human beings. So tell everybody a little bit, tell them about your program. What do you have available for people who we believe because of COVID two major um, topics are going to be top of people's mind. I need, I need to build my wealth, which is mine and Dana's favorite topic. Yeah. Uh, yes. and I need to, I need to have better health. Uh, when these kind of things happen. And so what are, what, what do you have available and how could people work with you more closely on, on your programs? Yeah. So my, my, my most popular program is the lean program, living energized and nourish. And I always say it's, it's kind of like a gateway program. It's very entry level. You know, my goal is that um, when you come out of the seven week program, that you have a clear understanding of what macronutrients are and what you're nutritional awareness with regards to the foods that you love to eat. You recognize um, how inflammation is impacting your overall well-being and, and you start losing weight, which makes you feel better. Um, the other thing that I think is very unique about the seven-week program is the daily support and accountability. Here's the problem. You know, people are given, you know, recommendations by their doctor or by a dietitian, and then they have to go out and do it on their own. And it's hard. So um, this program is set up where you're checking in daily. You have access to me and my team daily, you know, to ask questions, to vent, to, you know, celebrate your wins and to, you know, commiserate when you're struggling. Um, and I think that, that that model really helps people see that long-term success. And, and really, the best way to connect with me is through social media. 
Um, Instagram is probably my biggest platform um, because I'm an open book. I, you know, I don't hide any secrets. I will tell you exactly what to do if you want to do it on your own. I always just say if what I'm saying feels a little overwhelming and, and daunting, then that's why you come work with me. Um, so I can simplify it and, and kind of personally connect with you and help. So um, my Instagram handle is Amanda Nybert RD. So yeah, follow me there. Tons of tips and recipes um, to kind of make healthy living as easy as possible because it doesn't have to be hard. Yeah. You, uh, we're going to post links to, to your social media and stuff too, Amanda, but I will say you were the first person that really ever got me even thinking. I didn't even know what intermittent fasting was, to be honest. And, and I love your program because one, just the collaboration of the group, like being in the closed Facebook group, I loved that because on the days that I really did. Yeah, Dana, so we have an app now, so you don't even have to use social media. Oh yeah. Well, that's, yes. Yeah. So I, I, yes. I need to do it again. Um, and, and that's, but you bring me to my second point, which was, I love that you can do it two or three rounds and then maybe you're good on your own for a minute. And then when you need to get back into it, like, like right now I need to get back in. You, know, so you kind of go through phases. You can jump you, back in. You can jump back in. Yeah. I love that. I think it's that's definitely great. a, it's definitely a community. And, and my goal is to empower you with the information that you need after seven weeks. So you don't need me, you know, but if come January 1st, you've, you know, lived your best life in November and December and you need me, I'm here for you for sure. Mm -hmm. So, okay, I have like two really quick, easy questions. One, because okay. everybody asks, um, what do you think is the difference between eating versus working out when you really want to lose weight? I mean, because you hear, oh, oh. It's easy, right, you don't have to work out. You know what I mean? That's a great question. Diet is 80%. You cannot out-exercise a bad diet. And I think a lot of people put a lot of effort into exercise and they're not putting enough effort into their food choices. Yeah, I totally agree. And then I have a personal question just while I, while you're here, I'm going to be selfish and ask one. <laughs> okay. So, so I was doing so good with the, with the intermittent fasting. And then I actually started, like I gained a few pounds back. And so our friend Beth of Kitchen Shift, what, I met with her one time and she said, yeah. she said, you might need to stop the intermittent fasting for a minute because you could be getting into where maybe your body thinks that you're doing it too much and your body thinks you're starving itself. So you're holding on. I was like holding on to, so any, what are I just would love your thoughts around that. You know, I, I don't think that um, necessarily you adapt to intermittent fasting. It just doesn't really work like that. You know, yeah. the system is very, it, it is what it is. It's not like caloric in and out. I think probably what happened is, is that your macros were out of balance. Mm -hmm. You were either under eating during your, during your eating window. So you had created a very low metabolic rate. You know, if you only eat 1400 calories every day, eventually your body's going to adapt to 1400 calories and you're going to maintain there. So a lot of times when I have people long-term clients and, and this is why I set up my monthly group. So this is my monthly group is really for people like you that have been longtime clients that kind of need that kind of in and out of support. But um, sometimes you got to reverse diet. So um, mm -hmm. a lot of people get to their goal weight and they don't do the reverse dieting. And that's why so many people gain it back. So for example, if you lost weight at 1400 calories, you know, when you were kind of done and ready to maintain, did you actively work to get your metabolic rate back up to 16, 17, 1800 calories? Mm -hmm. If you didn't, then that's why you gained weight because yep. you weren't eating 14. When you gained weight, you didn't, it wasn't because you were eating 1400 calories. You're probably eating 1500 calories. You're probably eating 1600 calories. So you were eating a little bit more. So I wouldn't blame the fasting for that. I would blame the, you know, the, the macros with maybe the lack of that reverse engineering of your, of your metabolism. Yeah, that makes sense. You know, you actually, I just thought, Linda and I have talked about this before too, but for me, one of the best things about the fasting is I feel so much more alert and like clear headed. And I think people don't realize that. And then it's like, when you eat all of a sudden, you know, Linda, sometimes we're like, Brain oh ball. yeah. And then I feel like I can't even think I'm like, man, I should have just not, I should have gone a little bit longer until I could get through what I needed to accomplish. Cause you can think so much clearer when you're fasting. Do other people well, and that, that is, that is not just by chance, you know, um, if we weren't able, able to thrive in a fasted state as a species, we wouldn't be here because we had to work really hard for our food back in the day. And so 
we are, you know, created to have processes in place that actually increase adrenaline in a, in a fasted state, increase growth hormone in a fasted state, reduce hunger levels, you know, all of these, you know, chemical processes in the body are there to support us and make us thrive in that fasted state. Now, you know, if your body, if the underlining, you know, foundation of your body is inflamed and kind of off track, you're not going to feel great in a fasted state, but once you get your body kind of in place, you thrive on, on that fasting. Uh, I assume somewhere in your program, you kind of help people if, figure out if they're, uh, if they've got inflammation and stuff like that. Oh, absolutely. It's one of the first things that we talk about because guess what? Everyone is, <laughs> is just, you know, I always say, um, you're carrying around five to six pounds of inflammation at all time. And most women carry it right in their midsection. Yep. You know, I work with a lot of older women and they say, Amanda, I've been thin all my life and, and I haven't, you know, I'm still thin, but I've gained all this weight in my midsection. And that is inflammation, hormone imbalance, cortisol, all of those things. So we find when we really address the foods that we're consuming and we reduce that infl inflammatory process that that, you know, midsection gets so much better. Mm. Love yeah, it. That's great. Is there anything we should have asked you that we didn't, that you think would be good for our listeners? <laughs> I don't know. You guys covered it. I mean, you know, again, I think that um, I love your direction with um, wealth and wellness. I, I think they're very, two very powerful things that we all need to be focused on, you know, and I, and I think especially as women, I mean, I'm not sure if you guys really kind of market towards women, but as women, you know, we put everyone else before ourselves and we can't do that. We have to recognize that in order for us to serve everyone at the highest level, we must serve ourselves first. So, you know, um, it's important that as we move into this new year that we make our health and wealth a priority. Yeah. Thank you. Awesome. Well, Amanda, thank you for what you do for the world. Uh, it's so needed, especially during COVID-19. I'm sure you've kept a lot of people together <laughs> during a time that, that it could have been very easy to fall apart. I tried for sure. As a community, we did our best. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Amanda. We'll post all of your stuff so everyone can go follow you because I feel like it's just such an easy way to start. So if you've been thinking about intermittent fasting or thinking about growing your health even more, it's just a, it's a really great place to start. Yeah. If you just want to learn more about health and how to understand uh, the complicated things and make them simple, uh, Amanda's program would be a great way uh, to do that. So remember, if you'd like to be a guest on our podcast and have Dana and I help you with a situation or opportunity or challenge, just submit your name to us at info at everything, life, and real estate. Be sure and give us a brief description of what your challenge is and how we might be able to help you. Uh, we'd love to hear from you. If you would uh, want to give Dana and I a compliment, give us a review down at the bottom. We appreciate that. Uh, and uh, tune in. We're going to have some more great guests uh, coming your way. So Dana, I will talk to you next week. Talk to you then. Thank you. Amanda, thank you. Be sure to subscribe for more business strategies and tactics to inspire you to live an abundant real estate life. Don't forget to rate and review so we can bring you the best content. Find this and other valuable information at everythinglifeandrealestate.com.